with that said, this is a time for us to connect, time to worship our Lord. And may God grant us eyes to see and ears to hear as we worship this day. So let us all rise and sing. We're going to rise and sing a Victory in Jesus. This actually is in our hymnal, and it's kind of like a, it's almost like a, has a country flair to it. So and you'll like it because there's a little bit of a band going in there. I thought that was kind of neat, but anyways, let's worship the Lord. Let's rise and sing Victory in Jesus.
Let us uh, bring our hearts and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many ways that you have touched our lives this past week with the many blessings and answered prayers. And we are so grateful. Oh well, Lord, open our eyes to truly see one another, to truly love one another, so that we might discover your presence in the smile of our family members, our friends, our co-workers, and our neighbors, and even strangers who cross our path. Open our ears and eyes to the needs of the world, that we might respond with your compassion and humility. Open our hearts to your grace and to your love, that we might find guidance and strength for the week ahead. Oh Lord, we offer up names and situations to you in prayer for compassionate, healing love. We also lift up those who are on our prayer list this day, such as Mary Robbins. We pray that her continued healing and recovery. We also pray for our beloved Betty Springstead for successful prognosis and treatment. And we also pray for Zion Humphrey for continued healing from his eye surgery. Lord, be with each one of them. Lay your hand of healing gently over their lives and pour your spirit of peace over them. At this time, we turn our hearts to you, O Lord. May your spirits be with all those who are viewing our service from afar and those who are here in our sanctuary. Bring us to you. Lord, touch our hearts. Renew our minds with your wisdom. Guide our paths in holy ways as we silently lift up our espresso prayers to you. Oh God, enable us to be strong in our commitment to you by understanding the call to serve your kingdom by responding. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Sustainer. Amen. Amen. We are going to stand here for our second hymn today, which is Tell Me the Story of Jesus. It kind of, you will see the words on the monitor. It's going to be silent, but then it'll, it'll play and then we'll sing along. Um, again, we all just ask for the, let's try to connect with the words, you know, allow the Lord, Lord Spirit to touch your heart. 
to help transform you in some way, to find a passion to just really elevate your mind and your understanding today, as well as ask for the Lord, ask for the Lord to strengthen our faith today in His promises as we all will stand here and sing, tell me the story of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings to earth. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him. Tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. When you uh, came into the sanctuary today, you had an opportunity to place your offering in the offering plate. If you missed that opportunity and you'd like to make an offering, uh, please raise your hand and our ushers will come to you. If you are watching us from afar or online, um, you can click on the link just below the video and it'll take you to a secured site and you can make an offering there. As God has blessed our lives with abundant love and gifts, let us bring our offerings, our gifts, our time, our talents, and uh, to this place. Seeking to help others, to offer comfort and hope for the mission and maintenance needs of Christ Church. As Christ's disciples, let us all rise and sing the doxology.
of dedication for all the gifts and all the time and the talent that we, this Christ Church has received this week. So let us all pray. Lord of all mercies and compassion, bless these gifts lovingly offered and all the people here. Help us to use these gifts for ministries of hope through our church and into our community, our nation, and our world. As we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verses 13 through 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. You know, this is the first time I've ever actually preached on this particular scripture. So sometimes it's exciting to, to take on something you never took on before. And this is one of them. And I really love this piece of scripture, I have to say. You know, and our scripture today really starts out with these words. Love must be sincere. Love must be sincere. Meaning our love for one another, our love for those that are in need, it must be genuine, genuine love. It must come straight from our heart. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we are to hate one thing. We are to hate one thing, and that one thing is evil. We are to hate that. We are to cling to what is good. What is good? We have to stick to it. It has to be part of our life day after day. Love comes from the heart, which is from our spiritual being. Love permits us, permits us as Christians to function really in a healthy way, in a healthy, friendly way. This is what Paul means. This is what Paul means when he says, be devoted. To one another in love. Be devoted to one another in love. As well as honor one another above yourselves. Putting others before yourselves. The last will be first, right? The first will be last. Putting others before yourselves. So it's okay to be last. When life gets difficult, it can, we cannot. We cannot allow our zeal, our passion to grow cold or to become dormant in any way. What is life without passion, without a purpose, 
but it's life. Our purpose helps us. It really does help us. Our passion helps us. It helps us to be joyful. It helps us to, to be hopeful, to be patient uh, when we are facing affliction. Our passion for God leads us to faithful prayer. Think about that. Faithful prayer, allowing us to lift up our concerns to the Lord for assistance. Our fellowship with one another is much more than patting each other on the back or shaking each other's hands each week. It's more than that. It's about sharing in one another's blessings and concerns. It allows us to grow together as a part of Christ's earthly kingdom. We are a family. Look around. Look to your right. Look to your left. Look around. That's your family. This is our Christian family. We are together as one. How on earth could we ever face opponents if we cannot get along with one another? with a humble heart, with a willingness to help each other when there is a time of need. How on earth could we even consider helping those in need if we can't help one another? We must be God's love in action. Our love for one another must be genuine love clinging to what is good. We are to overcome evil with good. It kind of reminds me of a story I read. And I like my stories when I read them. And this one, I really like this story because it's about a young man who wanted to buy back his family farm. And this story actually is a true story. It's a story about love. It's, it has compassion in it. It has community in it. It has kindness in it. And the young man's name so happens to be David. David. He and his family have been farmers in Nebraska for many decades. Many decades. And for some unknown reason, their 80-acre farm was sold by one of their ancestors a few years earlier. Not sure, they're not sure how, they didn't say how it happened or whatever. And the family, this family was heartbroken because of this. Because this is the way they, they lived their life. By the loss of this land, they hurt them. And there was nothing at the time that they could do about it. And again, by divine things just happen sometimes, don't they? Divine things just happen sometimes. That same 80 acres was put up for sale at the local auction. And David and his father heard about it, and they pooled all their money together. And they decided to go to that auction with the hopes of getting this land back. When David and his father arrived at this auction, their hopes began to evaporate because they saw 200 plus farmers there at this auction. So their hopes were starting to diminish. At that point, they, were, they kind of felt convinced that they could never have enough money to afford to buy back this land because there were so many wealthy people there. And they knew it. And as you know, sometimes auctions can be very unpredictable. They can be very unpredictable. Since you never know what motivates people to really bid on something. You have no idea why that happens. Especially those who have a lot of money. Especially with those who have a lot of money. There's a lot of bid bidders going there. When there's a lot of bidders, what happens? A lot of bidding happens. And the price keeps going up, right? And David and his father 
were waiting anxiously for their property as other properties were being sold before them. And then all of a sudden, their farmland was up for bed. David and his father placed the first bed. And afterwards, they noticed something strange was happening. Something strange was happening. Not one, not one of 200 farmers tried to outbid them. No one said a word. They were the first bids. No one said a word afterwards. My friends, this was an 80-acre piece of property. It was viable farmland. It was basically a farmer's dream. The auctioneer was stunned that no one was bidding. Stunned. He was praising the land. This is fertile land. He gave all kinds of reasons why the people should be bidding on it. And yet, not one word was said. Not one. The auctioneer was puzzled. He even took a break trying to figure out what was happening. He's got one bid. That's all he has. And he attempted to sell it three more times. In frustration, he had no choice. He slammed down his gavel as the property was sold. It was sold with David's bed. This was a, really, this was a display of solidarity, my friends, for one man's family. One man's family. It turns out that the farmers got together before that auction, and many of them knew David's family and knew David very well, and they knew what had happened to them. They discussed the fate of David's farmland, and they all agreed. They all agreed that not one would outbid David's bid. Not one of them would do that. Some people knew him, some people didn't even know, but they all agreed not to overbid. So he could regain his family's farming legacy that day. My friends, this is what it means to be a community. Think about it. This is what it means to be a community. This is what it means to be in fellowship with one another. This is what it means to honor one another above yourselves by overcoming greed with love. By overcoming greed with love. Greed sold the property, I'm sure, prior. But overcoming greed with love. David's family was able to get their property back because of love. Love was because of love for David's family. As Christians, this is a great example of how we must look out for one another. Look out for one another. By banding together to become the church that's led by Christ's love. That's joyful. Joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. The language of genuine love is understood by all who it touches. Whoever it touches, it's understood. Verse 14 says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless them and do not curse them. You know, when the Lord was ministering on the earth, he had enemies. Paul and the other apostles, they had enemies who opposed their work. Just as we have family members that oppose our work in Christ, friends and co-workers alike. But most people in our world today, they like to return evil with evil. Would you agree? Evil with evil. And sometimes you'll see them returning good with good. Yet, people like to criticize people for all the time. All the time. It happens all the time. 
People like to say unkind things, and most of the time when they say unkind things, they also say things that aren't truthful, which can cause people to become angry at their enemies by fighting back, by fighting back with all they have. Yet our scripture tells us not to do this. Not to do this. It's tempting, but not to do this. As disciples, we are charged to live at a higher standard. We are to overcome evil with good. Which requires a whole lot of love on our part. Would you agree? I mean, we've got to dig deep to get that love out of there. Now, you got to dig deep not to fight back. But rather, it's about putting our faith in God. Think about this. If you defend yourself and you fight back, you make judgment because you take away the Lord's ability to defend you because you've taken it on and you haven't given it to the Lord to take and do something with it. This can be difficult to do. I know it's difficult to do. We are humans. This is difficult to do. When the going gets tough, what do they say? It's tough to go. Yeah. The faithful get going in prayer. They get going in prayer. Tough gets going. The tough get going. In prayer. In prayer. By asking God for his love. His love. His love to what? Transcend through us. To transcend through us. So we may show kindness. We may show kindness to our enemies. We may think that being kind to our enemies would cause them to get even madder, get even more angry. Yet Paul's urging us to overcome evil with good in the name of the Lord, connecting with the Lord, by placing, placing coals of good, coals of good onto your opponent's head. One coal after another. Rather than giving evil. Giving out good rather than evil. If we return evil with evil, what happens? We ignite the fire of anger and hatred. It continues to perpetuate and keeps elevating. As Christians, it's sometimes we think of ourselves, sometimes we think of ourselves as Christians and we live our lives behind this veil of secrecy. But in reality, my friends, we live our lives in a glass house as Christians. We need to realize this, that people are watching us. People are watching us. They're always looking in to see how we're living our lives as Christians. People are listening to what we say, to what we do, and how we do things. Now, as disciples, how are we living our life today? How are we living our life today? Are we living in a sinful manner? Like it or not, we're supposed to live our lives as peacemakers in all situations with all people. Let's remember what Jesus said. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. The, the Lord doesn't want us to create ill will, but rather we are to display compassion and humility to those who attack us. We are not to lean on selfishness or lean on our pride, trying to figure out how we can get back at our enemies. But rather, we're supposed to wait for God to repay them. In this lifetime, we're on Judgment Day. Let us leave it to God. As disciples of Jesus Christ, let us lean on our faith in the Lord. We cannot, really, if you think about it, we cannot successfully walk with one foot on a path with Jesus Christ and our other foot firmly planted in this world of evil. 
It's kind of hard to walk that way. Think about it. As disciples of Christ, let us do what's best. Let us do what's best to build up Christ's church with love. Let us be an example for those in our community who are around us as they look in. You know, just as Paul reminds us in verse 20, he said, if your enemy is hungry, what do we do? Yeah. Feed him. If, you're, if he's thirsty, what do we do? Give him something to drink. By doing this, we will pile one burning coal of good on his head. One coal of good after another. Think about that. One coal of good after another on his head. This is how we will overcome evil. This is how it's done. We do it with the genuine love of God. Amen. This morning, uh, I hope you've been touched by the Lord's Holy Spirit, that you've been refreshed, because that's why we come to church. And uh, we've had communion with our Lord this morning, and we have given thanks to God, and, and praise God for the many blessings and answered prayers in our lives. And we have lifted up prayers for people we care about, people we love, for healing this day. And we have learned this, this day, if our enemy is hungry, we yeah. feed him. If he is thirsty, we give him something to drink. By doing this, we will pile one burning coal of good on his head. That's how we overcome evil, is with good. So let us celebrate God's grace. Let us embrace the Lord's unconditional love in our lives and the Holy Spirit's encouragement in our walks as we rise and sing. This is uh, one of those hymns that we, we can get loud and you can have fun with, and this is when the roll is called up yonder. So let's hear your voices. Let's let the Lord hear us, okay, this morning. Let's all rise and sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the road is cold up yonder I'll be there
live peacefully with others, being peacemakers, holding fast to what is good, to honor what is just, by showing mutual affection for all with love in our hearts. Let us go with the blessings of God as we depart in peace together this day and always. Amen. Amen.